Good morning, everyone. My name is Taryn, and this is Nicole Flowerhouse. Welcome back, and on this channel, I share with you everything about my cut flower garden. I'm located in zone 7B. Today, I wanted to start out with an update on my zinnia patch that is currently planted in front of the rain barrel deck. The rain barrels aren't on the deck yet because the house is still waiting to be painted. I'm hoping that happens within the next week or two. I did sow these directly from seed, the ones that are already blooming. There were a lot of seeds that didn't germinate, so I've placed in those spots seedlings that I had grown inside. And I finally was able to get all of the weeds out of here. There were a ton of weeds, as you saw in previous videos, for a long time I couldn't differentiate the weeds from the seedlings. And as the zinnias grew taller, I could figure out what was what. So I've really cleaned up this spot and I've filled in all the holes with new seedlings and I can't wait for this to flush out and look beautiful. Zinnias are a plant that benefit from pinching, so I didn't get around to it early enough for some of these, so they're already blooming, but I will cut these stems down pretty hard so that the plant will branch out at the base. Along the fence line here, I have some tomato plants that are looking very established. They're setting flowers and hopefully we'll have fruit on them soon. This next garden box right here is the one that I had all of the poppies in. Those poppies were clearly done about two weeks ago, so I've cleared all of those out. I now have space to plant something new. And this basil right here, I didn't think was doing very well at all, but I went ahead and pinched it back and it really responded to that and is starting to branch out. So I think this basil just needed some more space and it has that now. And next to my basil, I have dill. It is starting to flower. I do like to use the flowers in arrangements. I found that it flops a little bit if you don't condition it right. So I really like to give the dill a lot of time to soak in water in cool temperatures out of direct light before I use it in any kind of arrangements. Pretty soon I'm going to be taking out these plants. These are bachelor's buttons. This group of bachelor's buttons I planted in the fall and overwintered them. They gave me tons of blooms early in the spring and into early summer here. But these plants are just spent. This one right here completely died. I'm not sure if that was just the end of its life cycle or something happened to this one but the other two next to it need to come out as well so i'll be planting something new there soon along here where the daffodils were i have some tomatoes and then next to that i have a hypericum plant or also known as saint john's wort when i planted this i was really hoping to get berries on it some hypericum produce really cool berries and they last forever in flower arrangements and are really nice. But unfortunately, I learned that there's multiple varieties of this. I just thought there were different colors. I didn't realize there were different types of hypericum. 
and I don't think this one is going to produce berries. I'll give it some more time to see, but I also think I'll leave this plant in just because I use those branches as greenery in my arrangements and it looks really nice. It has a nice texture and it's not too stiff. These poor sweet peas are completely cooked and neglected and ignored and I did not take care of these at all. But the one good thing that came out of that is that I think I'm going to get seeds. I've not saved seeds from sweet peas before. This is the perfect opportunity to try that since the pods are drying out nicely on the plant. So it'll be important that I get these cut off soon so that I can collect the pods before they break open and drop all the seeds into the soil below. I should be able to get that done and that'll be something new I can try and learn more about. Now this down here at the base of my sweet peas is celery. This one's not taking off that much. I may use it in a salad or something soon just so I can clear up this space and completely redo this bed. Here is a look at my Dara plants, but also new since the last video are my blue and pink lace flower. These have bloomed. They look a lot like the Dara, but they're much smaller and more round instead of oblong in, um, in their shape. And I just love this periwinkle blue. It's a very pretty color, kind of a cross between the blue and purple. And it's just really nice. This is the first year I've grown lace flower and I'm really liking it. I like the pink variety as well. And I think I will continue to grow this each season. Something new that I'm trying with the Dara this year is using the immature flowers in arrangements. I like cutting these early while they're still green. Green is a really popular color right now, I feel, and I just love incorporating this into my arrangements. And it's just another way to add texture and variety in a color that is really interesting. These are the snapdragons that I planted last fall and overwintered. They were going crazy earlier in the season when we had much cooler temperatures. Now they look okay, but they are starting to slow down a bit. And I have not been able to keep up with pruning this and keeping the blooms fresh. So I think these are either on their way out or I just need to go in and really spend some time cutting out all the spent flowers so that the plants will produce new flowers. The carnations that I planted are still doing very well. The ones that I planted in the fall are still producing and the ones that I planted in the spring are also producing. So I have a nice variety of colors now. I have a white, a blush pink, and a more saturated pink 
One thing I noticed about these carnation stems is that they're kind of fragile. I break them a lot by accident, and some of them are kind of flopping over. I think they need support starting closer to the ground. I also had an empty space in this bed in between all the carnations that I planted new snapdragon seedlings in the spring. And those are just starting to take off. So I'm interested to see how well these do in the heat of summer or if they will kind of slow down like the other ones. We'll have to see. And this little pollinator is just loving the pollen in those snapdragons. In this garden box over here, my cosmos have started to flower. I'm really excited about that. Just always seems to take so long for things to flower, but when it does, it takes me by surprise. I don't know how that works, but I'm really happy to see these starting to bloom. I also took the opportunity to pinch some of these cosmos flowers. So these ones don't have buds yet and are not blooming because I've cut the center stalk down to encourage the plant to branch out from the base. So when you pinch your flowers, you do delay them in their bloom time. They will bloom later when you pinch them. So I like to have some of mine pinched and I leave some of mine alone. It staggers the bloom time a little bit. And then the ones that I didn't pinch, when I cut those first blooms, I make sure I take them way down so that they will branch from the base from that point forward. Now this parsley in the back corner of this garden bed is spent, it's done, but I think I'm going to leave that in there to see if I can get any swallowtail or monarch butterflies. And along this back part of the fence here, I've continued with some tomato plants. These ones are much smaller and not established yet. I don't know if they're maybe not getting as much water or as much sun or what happened with those ones, but we'll leave them be. And in these two boxes here where I had daffodils earlier, I've planted some zinnias. Well, just one zinnia because they get pretty big. So one zinnia per box. Now my roses are having a very tough time right now because June bugs have hit my garden. This is something that I expect to happen every year and I don't spray or do anything. I try to hand pick as many of the June bugs off the plants as possible and I keep the damaged blooms um, pruned off as much as I can. I know it's really hard to see my plants looking like this and the roses just being destroyed by these bugs, but June bugs are usually a temporary thing and once their life cycle is complete, I prune back the roses pretty hard and they usually recover. I know sometimes these bugs can kill plants if they you know, take too much from them. I haven't lost a plant yet, 
to the June bugs because I try to stay on top of picking them off and keeping them pruned and well hydrated during this time. So hopefully we won't lose any roses, but all of my roses are struggling right now for that reason. I'm also noticing a lot of peach and pink colored blooms on this rose. I was certain that this rose was a Charles Darwin um, rose from David Austin, which is yellow. And I've been getting just a variety of color of blooms off of this plant. So maybe it's struggling. I could feed it, give it some fertilizer. I don't usually do that, but I might look into something. I'm not sure what's going on with the different color of blooms with that one. This one here is Desdemona. She is struggling like I've already mentioned, but despite all of the June bugs and all of the damage, there are still fresh buds. There's still nice green foliage on the plant. And there's also new growth and red foliage, so I think it's going to be okay. I, you know, like I said earlier, I'm going to go through tonight and pick a lot of these bugs off. I just drop them into a cup of soapy water and that takes care of them. This plant right here is called Silene Blushing Lanterns. The seed I got from Floret Flower, and I've shown this in previous videos, I am finding that this plant, when you cut it, just really multiplies. So cutting this flower a lot gives you even more flowers, which I love. It's just something I've been including in every one of my bouquets and arrangements and it's just very nice and airy. The plant puts on these really nice pods, the lanterns, so to say. They get a white flower, and then once the flower is done, it falls off, and it leaves these little pods on here. This here is Celosia. I don't like to cut Celosia to use as foliage until it has flowered because I find that it wilts and flops too easily when you cut the plant young. So I like to let it mature, it gets a little bit woody and stronger, and then I'll cut and use it in arrangements. I also have some Zinnia seedlings planted in here with the Celosia. They're quite a bit smaller, so I hope that they're able to stretch and find the sunlight and grow into big plants and that they don't have to compete too much with the Celosia. Now in this spot here, I used to have bachelor's buttons. These were planted way too close together. I have too many of them in there and it was just too hard to even cut them to use in arrangements because it was so compact. Another thing is I had the wire mesh up here at the top and it was overlapping, making some of the holes really small. So there was just no movement, no wiggle room whatsoever in these plants and I couldn't use them. So I just decided I will take them out and plant something new right there. This right here is an Orlea plant. It has white flowers, and unfortunately, I didn't get to cutting this plant, but I'm kind of glad because now I have these green pods. And like I said about the immature Dara, this is another way to incorporate something neat into your arrangements that's the color green. And also, I can tell that these are seeds developing. They look exactly like the Orlea seeds that I planted. So I think I'm going to let these dry out and see if I can save these seeds. Mm -hmm. 
I've also noticed that these seed pods in particular have amazing vase life. They last in the vase forever and just kind of dry out. Down at this end of the bed, I have some Gumfrina seedlings. My seeds that I direct sow did not take, so I replaced them with seedlings that I started in trays. They're really far behind compared to the rest of the garden, but I think I have plenty of time left for them. They should still mature in time to produce a lot of blooms for me in the fall. This rose down here on the end is Wild Eve and it has a lot of fungal disease on the leaves. So I'm just gonna go in and prune all of that off. I don't use any kind of sprays on my roses to prevent fungal disease. And in our zone, we are very hot and humid. So it is really common for stuff like that to happen to my roses. I just prune back any damaged foliage and they seem to respond and still be fine and put on fresh growth. Okay, over here is my red spike amaranth, and I've always had trouble with pest damage on this plant. I've never been able to grow it where the leaves didn't get just absolutely chewed up. However, the amaranth spikes itself seem to be fine and unbothered, which is not that big of a deal that the leaves are chewed up because I take the leaves off anyway when I'm using these in arrangements. So this is still a productive plant for me. I'm liking where I cut these back so that they would produce smaller stems. That does seem to be working. However, I did recently watch a video about pinching from Florette and she was explaining the importance of pinching amaranth very young. And now I see why, because these plants are absolutely huge and producing very thick stems. So next year, I'll be sure to pinch them much earlier. This plant beneath that is red hibiscus. And this green plant down here with the white flowers is something called nigella. And once these flowers are done, they produce really cool pods on the end. I think this is the one that produces pods. Looking at the flowers, I'm not entirely sure, but I will put something up on the screen of what I think this is, of what I think I bought. This right here is called straw flower and the petals are very papery. You can hear it here. And I love the color on this one. It's kind of a pearlescent white. And actually I found a little bug under here. So a lot of the times on flowers, bugs hide underneath the flowers. So that's a good place to check and look for them when you're trying to hand pick off bugs. And at the end of this garden bed on the trellis, I have a very happy and well-established cucumber plant that is climbing the trellis, and it is also climbing some of these larger amaranth plants, which I'm just gonna let that go and see what happens.
Now this side of the garden bed is a total mess. You can see I've almost lost my entire pathway, but the bachelor's buttons on this side have fallen over again. So I think I'm just gonna prune all of this out and thin it down. I still have the marigolds in here, which I love. I love the smell of them. I know it's kind of a strong smell, but it just reminds me of summer. And the herbs are kind of crossing over from the garden bed next door. But I can't say enough about how happy I am with the way this eucalyptus is just pushing out new growth. At the beginning of the spring, I almost took these plants out because they had diseased foliage, they had spots, and just looked terrible. But they have produced so much new growth. I'm so glad I left them alone. I was thinking about moving these plants, but I think they are happy with their spot. Should probably just leave them there. I'm just really impressed with the volume that I have. A lot of growers grow eucalyptus as annuals and plant new seedlings every year. And when you do that, you don't really get growth like this until the fall. So the fact that I was able to baby these through our winter and save them in our zone, again, I'm in zone 7B, so we have a pretty mild winter. I did keep them covered up with frost cloth all winter. So the fact that I was able to do that and get this much growth at the beginning of the season is just amazing. Next to that are my chrysanthemums and then here is oregano that has gone to flower. And at the end of my herb garden, I have a chives plant. The rose there to the left is called England's rose. And then in front of that, I have a bunch of chamomile. Now the chamomile looks really bad. I've never grown this before, and obviously I don't know how to take care of it. Um, all the flowers are spent, and there's a lot of brown and damaged, dried up parts of this plant. So I'm wondering if I cut this back pretty hard and prune it down back to the green healthy foliage, if it'll recover and send up more blooms or if it's just done for the season, I'm not sure. And at some point I wanna take back my aisle here and get all this cleaned up and pruned back so that I can still walk between these garden beds. I am happy to see that the teepee trellis that my husband Kelly built for me last week, maybe two weeks ago, it's been a while. But anyways, this teepee trellis has held up through some pretty strong storms. It hasn't budged at all. So I'm really happy with the way this is going. The Strawberry Hill Rose is nice and supported. It needs pruned. It has some fungal damage down here at the bottom. And I'm not really sure how to prune a climbing rose. I'm getting a lot of blooms towards the top. And I think there's methods or ways to try to push blooms through the whole plant instead of just at the top. So I need to look into that, but if you have any tips, leave them in the comments below and I will hopefully learn from all of my wonderful viewers. This flower right here is called Status. I just planted a mix, so I'm getting all kinds of nice colors. That one was a lavender color. Toward the end of this garden bed is an Orlea plant that still has the white blooms on it. But within this plant, I still have some of those green seed pods as well. It's kind of a mixture. I'm just not cutting these flowers as quickly as I need to be, but that's okay. I will use those seed pods as well.
This sprite here, I believe, is called Scabiosa, or also Pin Cushion Flower. This is the first time I've grown that this year, and I'm liking how it's going so far. There is another cherry tomato plant down here on the end, and since it's a cherry tomato variety, it should produce tomatoes sooner than the other ones. It is probably the biggest tomato plant I have right now. It's reached the top of this trellis. It has already set fruit, so we'll just be waiting on those to mature. Here is my garden bed full of sunflowers, both branching and single stem. I can't just explain how tall these are. I've never planted sunflowers before that didn't get eaten by deer and rabbits, so I did not know how tall these plants got. I knew they were big, but these things are towering over me. It's hard for me to convey on camera just how tall they are and how thick the stems are. So I think next year I will stick to just the branching varieties. I know the single stems, if you plant them close together, they're supposed to give you smaller stems, but I'm sure there's specific varieties that are smaller than others. I'm pretty sure some of these are called mammoth sunflowers and they truly live up to their name. I know I have some called Valentine, some are Autumn Beauty, and I think, and just some other varieties. I'll just have to pay more attention to what I'm planting next year and look at the mature size of the plants and choose more wisely for my setting, which is in a garden box.
Now I've also planted a ton of Rudbeckia plants. These are kind of like mini sunflowers. They have a lot of the same color palette as sunflowers. And additionally, they are mostly left alone by rabbits and deer. Rabbits and deer don't really like these as much as they love sunflowers. So I was determined to get something like a sunflower, so that's why I planted this entire bed full of these. And I have not had any trouble with critters eating these. So if you're having trouble with sunflowers and want a similar flower, go ahead and try some Rudbeckia. This is the Sahara mix, I believe, and maybe a few others. I can go back in my seed packets and see if I can find out which ones these are. But they're absolutely beautiful, and I just haven't had trouble with them being eaten. This cilantro here on the end of this bed is spent. I'm going to take any remaining blooms off of here and use them in my arrangements this week and completely clear this plant out. I probably won't plant anything else there to give the rose more space. My sunflower experiment for my patio didn't work, so I finally cleaned those out. This is the Munsteed Wood Rose. And here are my eucalyptus seedlings that I just was determined that I needed to replace those other eucalyptus you saw earlier that are obviously doing very well, but I will take all the eucalyptus I can get so these will not go to waste. I have two different varieties. This one in this tray is called Silver Drop. And then in the other tray, I have a bunch that are called Silver Dollar. The silver dollar are bigger and I've seen my silver dollar ones are a little bit more green and have less of a blue tone than the silver drop. The calendula bed is another thing that probably needs to be taken out soon. And next to that, I have another round of snapdragons. Now, I've noticed these ones are much less vigorous and much shorter than the ones that I had planted in the fall and wintered over. They're still very beautiful. They're just not as good for arrangements. So I'm not sure if it's the heat. Maybe they are just struggling because it's too hot for them or they're not planted as closely together, so maybe they just look less substantial. But I know they're not doing quite as well as the other ones, so I'll see how those turn out. And here I have hope for some more bachelor's buttons. I forgot that I had some extra seedlings and I tucked a couple just down here at the end of this bed. Now I know they look really small and that's how I made the mistake in the previous bed of planting the them way too close together, way too many, because doesn't that look tiny and small? Well, that plant will get huge if it gets nurtured correctly. Here are some calendula that are actually still looking really nice. These ones are ones that I planted new seedlings out in the spring. The other ones that look spent were ones that I planted in the fall and wintered over. This one is spent, but it's a variety you really like. Um, it's called Pink Surprise. But anyways, this is just a good example of why it's important to succession sow if you're wanting to get fresh, pretty blooms all season long. These ones are spent. You can see they have bug damage. The foliage is sickly looking. They just need to come out. But the other spring planted ones still look fine. So when you're cutting on your plants a lot, they just get tired and they won't last a full season. 
So that's why succession planting is a good thing to do if that's something you're interested in and in getting those blooms to last longer. Next, we will go visit the Dahlia Patch. I am just blown away with all the blooms that I'm getting this early in the season. It just makes me so happy. I do have bug damage on some of the blooms. I'm finding that the more ball-shaped ones have less damage than say the lily or the decorative shaped ones, but I love them all and I just have such a variety of colors. I don't know the variety names because these are just ones that I saved from last year that I transplanted from different parts in the garden up into these beds. So it's all really a surprise about which ones I'm going to get this year and where they're located, which actually is a lot of fun. So we'll just go through here, look at some of the blooms and just enjoy these dahlias. This dahlia right here is one of my favorites this year, but unfortunately I found a little baby grasshopper on there. I don't think grasshoppers is something you want in your garden because they do eat plants, but hopefully some predator will come in and eat this guy. I don't know.
Well, we have come to the end of this garden tour and of the video. If you enjoyed it, please do give me a thumbs up and the best way you can support me and my channel is to subscribe and share it with your flower loving friends. I'll see you next time. Bye.